Well, there's nothing worse than working hard on your health and being led in the complete wrong direction. So let's talk about this myth versus fact. Here in the studio, our fitness and health expert, Mark McDonald. Thank you for joining us. Thanks we appreciate it. We were just talking about, you know, what really works and what doesn't. Um, let's talk first about counting calories. You say there's a big myth here. Yeah, well, when people want to lose weight, they feel they have to cut, restrict, cut all their calories, create that deficit, and they lose weight. But then, those, then you get those cravings back, and they regain the weight. That's yo-yo dieting. Rather than using food for calories in versus calories out, mm -hmm. it's all about stabilizing your blood sugar, eating the right amount of calories per meal, the right balance of protein, fat, carbohydrates, so you stabilize your hormones and release your stored fat. Don't throw your body off. Don't confuse it. Yeah, and just don't create deficits. Everyone thinks, like, when is a deficit ever a good thing? So when <laughs> Not people, for our economy. No, so when people want to diet, they think they'll just cut, cut, cut. They get mm -hmm. results, and then they rebound. Right. We have to shift how we look at food. What about eating before bed? Because we've always heard, like, eat small meals and then eat dinner much, many hours before you go to bed. I've heard that you can't eat past 8 p.m. since I was a kid, and that is totally wrong. The reality is this. If you never spike your blood sugar, you don't eat too much, you can't store fat. So you should eat before bed. Think of a baby. A baby feeds every three to four hours. They eat a balance of protein, fat, carbs, and breast milk. Mm -hmm. And they eat a certain amount of calories per meal. They eat before bed. We just have to eat the right thing before bed. So you can eat before bed. It keeps your blood sugar balanced, makes your body burn fat. Do you know what I ate before bed last? What? Gummy bears. Yeah. Well, that, that's probably <laughs> Now, my son loves Who gummy bears. That? Who he does that? Eat a little protein with it. Yeah. So when Hunter eats Skittles, he has some string cheese with <laughs> your it. Your son is how old? He's seven. I'm 30. OK. okay. <laughs> All right. Um, also, I, I had heard this. And is this a myth, too? Do your cardio before your strength training. Does that really matter? It matters. It, it, you don't want to do your cardio before your strength training. It takes your body about 20 minutes to really start burning fat. Hmm. So by simply doing your strength training, like Pilates, first, first you will burn sugar, and then you will burn probably 30 to 40 percent more fat with that fat burning, doing the same type of activity. Or you could do cardio and strength together. I've been doing those you with can, those kettlebell swings. Yes, you can do a whole hard. hybrid of it. But many people like to walk on the treadmill for 30 minutes, yeah. then they do strength training. Switch that Switch up, it. you're going to burn much more mm. fat. And I think a lot of women can't lift weights because I'm going to get too big. It's not, not, no, not no. the case. One pound of fat is three times larger than one pound mm -hmm. of muscle. Muscle's your friend. It, it <laughs> controls your metabolism. You, when people get bulky, yep. it's because they put on muscle and they don't lose fat. If you eat right and you actually implement the right exercise, mm -hmm. you get t um, tighter and leaner. What about exercising on an empty stomach? Good idea? Um, bad idea. Mm. When your blood sugar is unstable, your body burns muscle whenever the blood sugar is low. So get a balanced meal in. It could be like a half meal, something to fuel your body, and that will help you burn fat and not muscle. Spot reduce. You can't say, I would like my arms to be much smaller, <laughs> but keep my legs the way they are. You can't do that. I mean, it's going to come across the board. In a perfect world, you could, but it's not a reality of it. You start losing in your face, then your neck, then your limbs, and then you get your trouble areas. Unfortunately, you gain weight in the areas you want to lose first, and it takes you longest to lose that in those same areas. So just be patient, implement the right strategies. You can take your body wherever you want. And I would just point out, sleep is so critical. Huge. Sleep controls our, horm our stress hormone cortisol. So when you're in a sleep deficit, your body overleases cortisol and makes you store fat. If you can manage your sleep and your stress, mm -hmm. You will take your body to a whole nother level. If someone can teach me to sleep eight hours and manage my stress, it would be a perfect world. <laughs> well, you don't have to sleep eight hours. You just have yeah. to learn how to sleep right. We want to optimize your sleep. This is true. Thank you so much. Good Thanks, to see you. Bobby.